innovative, groundbreaking, sexual. Are just a few words used by me to describe my recent box opening videos. Now that I had established a rabid fan base, the pressure was on to keep this cash cow a milking, and so I present to you my most super original video yet the Ceteris Top 10 Magic Sets of All Time. This list is 100% indisputable fact and not opinion based. Please do not attempt to dispute this video. Attempting to do so may lead to nausea, heartburn, indigestion, back pain, prolonged virginity, upset stomach, dizziness, general ball pain, lactation, feelings of anger, euphoria, and confusion, diarrhea, sore throat, death, headache, knee ache, shoulder ache, you get the picture, blurry vision, improved vision, blindness, gingivitis, kidney stones, twerking, dabbing, anal leakage, binge eating, and loss of appetite. Please do not watch this video if you have recently given birth, not given birth, woken up, stayed asleep, have eyes, are alive, dead, in a catatonic state, or possibly a robot. Actually, just don't watch this video at all. Coming in at number 10, we have Alpha Beta Unlimited Revised. Wait, what? Isn't that at least more than one set, you ask? Two things. Math, schmath, and two, uh, sh shut up. So anyway, this is where it all started. In 1993, Dr. Richard Garfield approached Wizards of the Coast to pitch his soon to be legendary new game, Robo Rally. What the f You see, kids, Richie G initially designed a board game called Robo Rally. Sounds fantastic but was told that Wizards wasn't capable of mass producing such a product, but they were interested in a more portable quick to play game and tasked the good doctor with designing something fitting that framework. And thus the prototype for Magic the Gathering was born. With Alpha being the first officially released set, Beta is basically a reprint of Alpha that slightly changed the previous set's rounded edges and fixed a few misprints. Oh, and actually printed some of the cards that were left out of Alpha, I'm looking at you, Volcanic Island. These two sets gave us some of the most powerful cards ever printed. The best dual lands to date, the Moxin, Black Lotus, Dark Ritual, Lightning Bolt, the rest of the Power Nine, my god, clearly this was a mistake and should be number one. Well, not so fast. While clearly powerful, you have to take into account how unbalanced these cards were. There was no rigorous playtesting team, no tournament play to factor in, nothing. Power is not the only determining factor in choosing a great set. There's design, balance, flavor, nostalgia, and so on. But what about unlimited or revised, you're possibly asking? Those sets laid the groundwork for what would become known as core sets. Sets containing mostly reprints to keep certain cards in circulation, easily attainable and accessible through the beginnings of tournament play. While they do contain new cards not seen in Alpha and Beta, there's enough reprints to lump them in here. Fun fact, your narrator here bought his first Magic cards in 1995 in the form of a revised starter deck and sat down a lonely path fraught with mystery, intrigue, alcoholism, and unicorns. Thanks, Dick Garfield, you f***ing legend. Next up we have Zendikar, the OG edition. Remember those glorious friendly fetch lands from Onslaught circa 2002? Well, a short seven years later, this nifty set brings us the enemy color cycle. Oh, and let's not forget that the original print run, dubbed Treasure Boxes, had a chance at containing reserve list cards such as, mm, I don't know, the Power F***ing 9? I shit you not. Beyond that insanity and a land cycle that has been impactful on every format since their printing, Zendikar was thematically interesting, taking place on a wacky plane that served prison to everyone's favorite tentacle monsters this side of Japornimation, the Eldrazi. While Emma Cozy and Ula La were off running amok, we also got the landfall mechanic, new planeswalkers, cool trap cards, and a pretty fun draft experience. Zendikar is a good balance of power and theme, setting up story implications for years to come. Zendikar, you truly are a set I would battle for. Another fun fact, Zendikar sounds like a redneck words Jeff Foxworthy joke. Hey Scooter, did you bring your hammer? Yeah, Zendikar, I'll go get it. Well, that was awkward. Moving on. Number eight brings us Urza Saga. It's 1998. Savage Garden is topping the charts, household internet is becoming commonplace, and Wizards drops one of my personal favorite sets, Urza Saga. From a lore standpoint, Nerds is quite a saucy little minx. He's Mishra's big bro, one of the earliest mentioned planeswalkers, and fought the good fight against the Phyrexian Menace for millennia. I said millennia. Let's talk about the actual set. Ready to take a trip on down to Boner Town? Check this out. Back to Basics, Exploration, Gilded Drake, Phyrexian Tower, Ock, Gaius f***ing Cradle, Sarah's Sanctum, Show and Tell, Sneak Attack, Time Spiral, Talarian Academy, and Yawgmoth's Wheel. All in the same set, Yowzer. It also introduced one of the most simple but useful mechanics yet, Cycling. This set was the end of an era right on the fringe of net decking taking over the competitive scene. Truly a historic period to have played in. 
If you weren't born in time to participate in the chaotic glee, now I encourage you to punch your parents right in their stupid baby mothers. Urza, we salute thee. Lucky number seven is Almond Cat! What the hell? That set's not even out yet! Oh yeah? Well, let me drop a few facts on you, smarty pants. Now, I'm no Egyptologist, but here's what I do know. There's some sand and pyramids, sphinxes, a history of cat worship and mummies and whatnot. You start in some cardboard and it sounds like a recipe for the seventh best set ever. I mean, look at this thing. Look at it. What is that? It looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh card for the spaceship and sent its offspring back in time to lead the human resistance or something. And if you're watching this video after Ami Cat's release and it's amazing, then I look like a genius. So, told you so. And if it sucks, well, uh, this was a joke. Yeah, that's it. Next. Number six brings us New Phyrexia. <laughs> Out with the old and in with the... Ah, oh, fuck it. New Phyrexia, formerly the Plain of Mirrodin, was created by this guy, who left this guy in charge while Karn went on vacation, and everything was fine and peace reigned for eons. Except for the part where Mimsy goes nuts, Karn comes home and accidentally infects the entire plane, and everything is slowly transformed into a hellish techno metal wasteland. Good job, dumbass. I really love the entire Return to Mirrodin block. The flavor and lore is top notch, and the Phyrexian mana gimmick has proven to be bonkers. There are tons of fun, powerful cards, but New Phyrexia is the crown jewel of this block. From Karn Liberated to Elish Norn and her Praetor Pals, great utility cards like Spells Cut, efficient removal such as Vapor Snag, Dismember, and Beast Within, plus a new sword, solid hand destruction in the form of Despise and Surgical Extraction, and the aforementioned Phyrexian mana cards, Jet Probe, Gut Shot, Mental Misstep, and Friends. This set gets high marks for power, fun, and flavor, but fuck Infect. Seriously. Fuck you. Go home. Cons of Tarkir. Maybe I'm biased, but you show me some fetch lands and there's a good chance you're making this list, though there are exceptions. Clearly bringing these lands back to standard for the first time in almost 13 years is monumental, but making them more accessible for modern and legacy is equally important and appreciated. Set in a world of dragon worship and home to the father of dragons himself, Sarkin Vol, this set promoted variety first as multicolor is the name of the game. I mean, the place is ruled by a bunch of feuding tricolored clans, and who doesn't love the clan? I know this narrator does. This set also had the return of the busted delve mechanic, which saw an immediate cross-format impact in the form of Dig Through Time, Treasure Cruise, and more. And no one can forget this guy, no matter how hard they try. As previously mentioned, there is more to a great set than raw power, and this set is widely considered one of the best design sets, period, with most ranking it as one of the best standalone draft experiences ever. Plus fetch lands, which make everything good. Except you. The final four kicks off with Lorwyn. What's so great about this set? Well, for starters, elves and fairies and goblins, oh my. Wanna know a secret? This game is funded by casual players. Sorry, Net Decking Ned, but without Casual Carl, there would be nowhere to play. Packs need to be sold and someone has to trade for all those terrible cards in your binder, and that's where these dirty, bottom-feeding, uh, I mean, uh, purdy, bottle-reading, oh, fuck it, I'll edit this out and post from the top, two, one. And that's where these attractive, pleasant-smelling casual players come in at. And what do casual players love? That's right, porn, but also elves and goblins and the like. But what about you competitive types? Well, Lorwyn's got your back to bridging both communities with cards like Thoughtseize, Rings of Bright Hearth, Cryptic Command, Doran the Siege Tower, Gaddic Teeth, Guilt Leaf Palace, Mistbind Click, Thorn of Amethyst, Vigor, and many more. Oh, that's not good enough for fourth place? Maybe not, unless this set also gave us the most important change to the game since its creation, Planeswalkers. And it did. The original Fab Five debuted here, and without this set, there would be no Mind Sculptors, Liberated Karns, or Cheap Lilianas. Thanks to this set, we're all lore winners! Hell, oh, fuck, edit that out too. Our bronze medalist is Ravnica City of Guilds. Taking place on a plane controlled by ten bicolored factions, there's an engaging story rife with more political intrigue and shady backstabbery than you can shake a blood litter quill at. We've touched on well-designed sets, but this one is so damn good it is literally award-winning, and so fondly remembered that a return to Ravnica broke all previous sales records as many retired Magic players came back to revisit an old familiar friend. Perhaps their only friend. So it's a fun set, great, but what about cards? Well, remember all those fetch lands we spoke of? They're hot garbage without something to grab, and there are a few targets of better quality than the debuting shock lands. Can I interest you in some birds of paradise? Sure, it's a reprint, but you can never have enough birds. Huh, touche. But there's also Court of Calling, Cloudstone Curio, Doubling Season, Glimpse the Unthinkable, Lightning Helix, Privileged Position, and one of the most broken mechanics ever, Dredge, as seen in such hits as Golgari Grave Troll, Lie from the Loam, etc. Well, I think that about covers it. Hmm? What's that, you ask? What about Bob? Thank you. 
I was wondering how to squeeze that joke in. Goodbye, sweet Ravnica. I look forward to seeing you again in 2019's Ravnica again and 2021's We Like Money. Runner-up to best set ever is Original Innistrad. Werewolves, zombies, vampires, and all manner of things that go right. Won't you leave the jokes to me? This set is so fun and innovative, I'm not sure it can be understood unless you were there when it happened. It's like a way, way, way more fun Pearl Harbor. And let's quickly acknowledge the Snapcaster Mage is totally busted and Lily on the Veil is one of the best Planeswalkers I've ever printed. Because the main reason this set is so good is just pure damn fun. Like this thing. It's called Moon Mist and it turns these guys into werewolves. The cards actually transform. If you're not into that, then find another game. This one's too good for you. And look at this! Rooftop Storm! What a piece of shit! But the design is so clever! You can't buy a flavor that good, unless you have 50 cents. And this set is perfectly balanced, begging to be drafted, but powerful enough to make it in a post-standard world. Only five years after its release, and boxes consistently bring $300. Why? Sure, a complex EV equation factoring in ridiculous full prices, but also because it's a national treasure whose glory will ring out through the ages sung defiantly by the winds of destiny. I don't know what that means either, but this set is a masterpiece and there is no way to mess up this winning formula. What? No! Stop that! Get away from her, you bitch! Whew. Original Innistrad, except no substitutes. Coming in at number one is Homelands. Okay, you got me. Coming in at number one, for real, is Fallen Empires, and I'm dead serious. Stop. Don't close this video, move your mouse away from that dislike button, and give me 30 seconds to change your mind. How? How in the Eight Rings of Hell could Fallen Empires be a good set, much less the best set ever? Well, for starters, remember Rocky? No. No. Okay, now you're not even trying. Yeah, him. Well, everyone loves an underdog, and Fallen Empires is Magic's biggest underdog. So every card in this set sucks, right? Ever been on the draw and got hit by a turn one ritual him and missed your first land drop? Ever been asked your life total on turn four and then double grenaded? Ever had your opponent say the words high tide and just started scooping? There are many reasons to play this game, but at the top of the list is to win, and this set has the most early efficient game enders, period. Look, it's not flashy or exciting, I know, but that's the bottom line. And you also have to factor in, <laughs> nah, I'm just f***ing with you, Time Spiral is the best set ever. You know it, I know it, Sad Onslaught Pack knows it, great power balance, suspend and split second are introduced here, plus the return of piles of old mechanics made for an amazing standard cycle, but also took limited to another level. And then there's the 121 time shifted card subset. This set has something for everyone. Like slivers? They're in there. Buyback? It's back. More? Sure, why not? This is the most variety stack set ever, and cue the obligatory card list. Academy Ruins, Ancestral Vision, Angel's Grace, Dread Return, Flagstones, Gauntlet of Power, Gemstone Caverns, Hypergenesis, <gasps> Crows and Grip, Living In, Lotus Bloom, Might of Old Crozier, Restore Balance, Rift Bolt, Safi, Swarm Yard, Teferi, Trickbind, Vesuva, Walk the Aeons, and tons more. There are two kinds of magic players. The ones who bow to the majesty of the spiral, and that guy. Don't be that guy. Time Spiral. Best set ever done. So that's it, the channel's first real video. For all of you lucky enough to be seeing this, I hope you got a couple of laughs or maybe learned something, even if you think I'm a hack. Either way, if you'd like to see more of this type of content, any likes, subscribes, etc. are greatly appreciated. I'd also love to see any comments about your ideal top 10 magic set list. So until next time, I'll catch y'all you guys on that flizz it my setter of peeps it's kind of like my sign off thing my setter of peeps like you guys are my set oh fuck off